Sometimes an unsupported version of macOS just doesn't live up to expectations. That hasn't been the case with my 2013 MacBook Pro. Sonoma has been running great, but I wanted to show all of you how easy it is to downgrade to an older version of macOS. So I downgraded this from Sonoma to its last supported macOS version, which was Big Sur, and I did so in less than 50 minutes. I captured all of the details to share with you here on YouTube. I'm going to show you how to downgrade to both supported and unsupported versions of macOS and go over some troubleshooting techniques for when you're dealing with volume and partition issues on your hard drive. In the same day that I downgraded this MacBook Pro to Big Sur, I also re-upgraded it to macOS Sonoma using OpenCore Legacy Patcher because I missed the features so much. Doing the downgrade and then the upgrade both in the same day is a testament to how quickly this can be done if you follow the steps in the process. Let's start by downgrading to supported macOS versions. First, find out the exact model of your Mac by going to the Apple menu, about this Mac, and then copy your serial number. Then go to everymac.com forward slash ultimate dash Mac dash lookup, don't worry, a link is in the description, and do a search with your serial number. Look down at the ID section to find out your exact model. You can see mine is 11,3. Then open up this compatibility guide at macsales.com, again, link in the description, and find your Mac model to see the latest compatible OS available. You can see from my computer, the latest supported OS is Big Sur. Once you've determined the compatible version, head to the Apple support page on downloading and installing Mac OS, link also in the description, scroll down and find the link to the OS that you're looking for. Then click to open it up in the App Store and click Get. Okay, this part threw me off. It took me to my system settings and it looked like it wasn't doing anything. But then after about a minute, maybe even more than a minute, the pop-up came up to download Big Sur. The download took about 11 minutes and then another stressful moment. A message saying Big Sur cannot be opened from a newer version of Mac OS. Don't worry though, this is to be expected. Open up your Applications folder and you'll find the OS installer ready to be moved to a USB drive. So get a 16 gigabyte or larger USB drive that you don't mind erasing and plug it into your computer. On a side note, you could reinstall your operating system via a network install by restarting your computer and holding Option, Shift, Command, and R on startup, and you could reinstall your system that way. But I think that the USB method is a little bit more reliable and you don't need Wi-Fi to do it. So that's the method that I chose. So go ahead and give your flash drive a name that's easy to type and remember. Then go to the Apple support page on creating a bootable installer, also linked in the description. Scroll down and find the command line code for the Mac OS version that you're looking to install. Copy it to your clipboard and then open up Terminal. Paste the code in and replace the very last part where it says my volume with the name that you gave your flash drive. Hit enter, enter your password, and let it do its thing. It took about five minutes for me. Once it's finished, you can see that the name of your flash drive has been changed and you've successfully created a new macOS installer. If you're looking to downgrade to an unsupported version of macOS, you'll use OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So open the app, select Create macOS Installer, select Download macOS Installer, choose the macOS version that you'd like, and hit Download. You can let the patcher walk you through the process, or you can watch my video on upgrading to unsupported Sonoma, as it's the same process, but just with a different operating system. Let me touch upon the backup situation real quick before we move on. You can't use a time machine backup when downgrading to an older version of macOS. It just can't be done. So back up the documents that you need on another USB drive or in a cloud service and get ready to wipe your hard drive clean. Okay, with the USB installer completed, restart your computer and hold the option key to bring up the bootable drives. Use the arrow key to select your installer. When the options appear, choose Disk Utility to wipe your hard drive. Choose your main hard drive and choose the Erase option at the top. Go through the steps to erase your hard drive and set it up as APFS. I actually had a bit of a hard time in disk utility during this step because I was trying to combine all of my old volumes and erase an old bootcamp volume, but I couldn't do it here in disk utility, so I just wiped my main hard drive, reinstalled Big Sur, and then I went into terminal afterwards and recombined all of my volumes, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did towards the end of the video, so hang tight for that. As long as you erase your main hard drive though, you should be good to go at this step. So quit out of disk utility and this time choose the install macOS option for whatever version you're installing. 
Choose your main hard drive from the options and hit continue. The first install screen took about 7 minutes for me. Then it rebooted and this second install screen took about 13 minutes. It rebooted again and loaded for about 3 minutes. Another 1 minute loading bar, restart and a final 1 minute loading bar to arrive at the select a country screen after a total time of 24 minutes. I went through the initial setup options and I was back in, back on macOS Big Sur in a total time of 41 minutes, which included downloading and creating the macOS installer. Everything was working great, but the state of my volumes that I had seen earlier in disk utility wasn't setting very well with me. Real quick though, I want to mention if you're having some weird issues after any type of upgrade, you might want to try a pram reset by restarting your computer and holding command option PR until your computer restarts again. You can also try holding shift on a restart to reboot into safe mode, which can fix some issues as well. Okay, back to my mess of hard drive volumes. In my settings, it was saying the max capacity was only 350 gigabytes when I knew it should be 500, and I had already seen the reason earlier in disk utility. So I decided to boot into recovery mode, and as you can see here in disk utility, I had a couple of unused volumes taking up significant space. Neither of them would erase with disk utility, and one wouldn't even mount. They were from old bootcamp installations, and I wanted to get rid of them and add their space to my main volume. So I opened up terminal in recovery mode by quitting out of disk utility and then going to the utilities dropdown and selecting terminal. A few commands later, my drive was fixed. I first entered disk util list to see a list of all my volumes and get the identifier for the ones I wanted to delete. In my case, it was disk five. I tried to erase it by entering disk util erase disk space APFS space new volume space disk five, but it didn't work. So then I entered disk util space APFS space delete container space disk five. It did its thing, and then I went back into disk utility, clicked the partition option at the top, and hit the minus button for the two unused volumes, which added the space back to my main volume. It was successful this time, so I logged back in and checked my storage to confirm that I now had 500 gigabytes max storage instead of only 350 gigabytes. So this should help any of you who are looking to remove any unused volumes on your Mac hard drive. So there you have it, a straightforward way to downgrade to an earlier version of macOS, either supported or unsupported. If you're also looking for a straightforward way to get all of your files sorted and organized on your Mac, you should check out this video right here where I go over one of the most underused features on Mac, smart folders. If you enjoyed the video you're watching right now, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more Mac tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. Good luck getting the operating system that you want on your computer. I'm Anson Alexander, and I will see you in the next one.